Here, we are going to take a look at the upper respiratory system. We will start with the nostril in the nose, where most of the time we are going to be inhaling and exhaling from. There's a right and left nostril, and we'd be separated by a septum that is not shown here on the model. As air comes in, it will swirl around the nasal concha in order to be warmer and to be more moist before it comes down into our lungs. Our lungs do not like cold, dry air. We can see the olfactory cells coming down into the roof of the nasal cavity, and that's what lets us interpret smells. As we travel further back into the nasal cavity, we can see our pharyngeal tonsil, important in the immune system. We can see in the bones, the sphenoid bone and the sphenoid sinus. We can see the frontal bone and the frontal sinus. This would be the nasal bone anterior to that. And then anterior to the bones, it's all cartilage in our nose. The other bone that's important is the palatine bone, which makes our hard palate separating the nasal cavity from our oral cavity. Posterior to that bone, we have some soft tissue. That would be your soft palate, again, separating nasal from oral cavity. In the oral cavity here, you can see tongue, and up front they do show teeth. Now, behind the nasal and oral cavity, we have a long tube known as the pharynx. We do break the pharynx into sections. Superior, we have a nasopharynx. This is where the eustachian tube would be coming in. In the middle, we have an oropharynx. And then on the inferior part, we have a laryngopharynx, where it meets with the larynx. The larynx is going to start with this piece of soft tissue known as the epiglottis. That's what separates our trachea from our esophagus keeping food in the esophagus only and not letting the food come into the trachea. We have vocal cords in the larynx before we get to the trachea. The thicker the vocal cords, the deeper the sound you make. Again, we can see the hyoid bone from the inside. We can see the thyroid cartilage on the inside. We can see a little bit of the cricoid cartilage on the inside before we would actually get to the trachea. This area here would be considered our larynx. And those are the structures of this upper respiratory system. Today, we are going to look at the respiratory model. Here is an anterior view, and we can see respiratory system, cardiovascular system, blood vessel circulatory system. Let's talk about a few things starting at the superior aspect. We have a bone up here, your hyoid bone. It is the only bone in your body that does not articulate with another bone. Inferior to that is a large piece of cartilage known as your thyroid cartilage, and this is going to be where your larynx or Adam's apple area would be. Underneath that we can see the cricoid cartilage just before we lead into many small rings of cartilage known as the trachea. This is going to also be called your windpipe where the air is going to go down into your lungs. Let's mention our thyroid gland that would have on either side which is a very important gland from the endocrine system. Superficially to the trachea, you can see a number of arteries and veins. Let's talk about the red arteries first. These three red arteries are coming off of the aortic arch. Here we have the brachiocephalic trunk, which leads up to the right common carotid and the right subclavian. On the other side, there is no trunk. There is just the left common carotid 
and the left subclavian artery. Those are shown in red. In blue, we have venous return. We can see the internal veins next to the neck would be our jugular veins, the right and left jugular, and then we have a right subclavian vein and a left subclavian vein. Those both run to the left brachiocephalic trunk or brachiocephalic vein and the right brachiocephalic vein. Both those brachiocephalics come down to the superior vena cava to lead back to the heart. Now we have lungs on either side of the heart. The left lung has two lobes. The right lung has three lobes. We're going to remove the outer covering of the lungs and the heart so we can see the structures underneath. As we take that off, we can see the inferior portion of the trachea and all the little cartilage rings. It comes to a split at an area known as the carina. From there, we have a left primary bronchii and a right primary bronchii. They're going to split again into secondary bronchii, which will eventually split into more tertiary bronchii until we get down to super small microscopic little terminal bronchioles, which are actually going to lead towards the respiratory zone of the lungs. Too small to see on this model but it branches out like a very big tree with a lot of surface area. Deep behind the trachea, we can see a large blood vessel running down. This is our descending thoracic aorta. Right next to that would be our esophagus. It runs down to this dome-shaped muscle that separates abdominal and thoracic cavities known as the diaphragm. This is the main muscle of breathing. We can see the descending abdominal aorta coming down beyond the diaphragm. We can see the esophagus coming through the diaphragm, heading towards where the stomach would be. And the area it's coming through is known as the esophageal hiatus. On this side, we would have the inferior vena cava bringing blood back to the heart as well.